Hi Chem students, we're going to talk about uh, mixing up some of the things that we've been playing with recently. We've been playing with acids, bases, and salts, and now the question is, what would happen if we were to mix them? I know that seems like a, a silly idea, but we're going to do it uh, with a very definite goal in mind, and that is we're going to always mix an acid and a base. And acids and bases we've found come in different varieties now. Uh, you don't have to be just a plain pure acid. Uh, you can be a salt that has acidic properties or uh, vice versa. You don't have to be just a regular old base. You can be a salt that has basic properties. So if we look down here uh, at some examples that I've got, uh, I can look at HCl and HCl is definitely, definitely, that's just a plain old acid. HCN also a plain old acid, but NH4Cl, that's a salt with acidic properties. Uh, HClO2, that's an acid. And CH3, NH3Br, that's a, that's a salt as well with acidic properties. So when we look at something like a chemical, we want to start uh, making these kind of associations. Immediately look at it and say, what is that thing? What's in my jar? What am I going to put into my jar like this thing right here that I've drawn in the middle? Let's go down, down the baseline as well. This is a base, just a regular old uh, pr uh, prototypical base. So is ammonia here. NaCN, that's a salt that has basic properties. Uh, here's just a plain old base. And then finally, this is also a salt with basic properties. Well, so now that we know that we have to identify what kind of uh, acids and bases we're talking about, when we mix them together, there's two possible outcomes. The first one is it can just be a regular old acid-base reaction. And the other one is we can create a system that's called a buffer. And just to give you a heads up, a buffer is a system that once it's made, okay, so once it's put together, it resists pH change. That is, once you have it all set up and you pour in any other substances, it will try to not change pH. And it's not really a, a, a try. It, it just resists pH change naturally due to Le Chatelier's principle. Uh, we're going to figure out in another video how to solve and find the pH that a, that a buffer is at. But for now, this one's just about identifying, is a substance, a is a mixture a buffer or is it just an acid-base reaction? And if it is a buffer, how do we write that down? So we're going to imagine in both cases here that we're going to take one of these acids, put it into this container, one of these bases, put it into the container, and we're going to have to make the decision, is it an acid-base reaction or a buffer? So let's start by looking at the first two, HCl, and NaOH. Now, <clears throat> when we put those in, that's an acid and a base. They're probably going to react some way, all right? And I want you to look to see if you find any common ions that might be produced from these substances. So, for example, if I put the HCl in there, that's going to form for me H3O pluses plus Cl minuses. And if I put the OH, NaOH in there, I'm going to get some sodium hydroxides, and some OH minuses. As you see, here's all the ions that can be produced from these two substances. And none of those ions are common. That being said, this would just be an acid-base reaction. A buffer is going to have a common ion. So we'll see an example of that in a few seconds. All right, well, let's try a different one. And we'll talk more about that, the reaction that occurs in just a bit. We're trying to identify at this point. Let's go to this next one. Let's put some HCN in there. So if I put HCN, if I focus right here on, on HCN, I'm going to look for a substance over on the other side that might have a common ion. And if I look carefully, do you see that they both have the cyanide? Because of that, they have a common ion. And one's an acid and one's a base. When they react, when we put them together, they're not going to actually go through the chemical reaction we'd expect. They're going to create this buffer because of this common ion. So we're going to have HC, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to have our HCN in there making an equilibrium to form uh, H3O plus and CN minus. And then this is this NACN, it's just going to break apart into Na plus and CN minus. Now the reason I know it's just going to break apart because th that is because that's a salt. So when we get done, when we get done in this container, we're going to have these, these species. We're going to have HCN 
Cn minus H3O plus, and we're also going to have Na plus and another source of Cn minus. So because of this, we now have what's called a common ion, and you can see the common ion right here and here. That makes this a buffer. So when we have an acid and a base together and they have a common ion, it's going to be a buffer. If we have an acid and a base together that don't have a common ion, it's not a buffer. So let's try another one. Let's try another mixture and see if we can make sense of it. Okay, now that I've cleaned that up a bit, let's take a look at the HCN once again and this NH3. These two species are, they, they can react with each other. And if I put the HCN into water, once again, I'm going to get my HCN making an equilibrium with H3O plus and CN minus. So we know that because it's going to react with water in the regular acid-base reaction. And I have ignored writing the water here, which is kind of bad, but I've done it. Okay, uh, the other substance, ammonia, if I put that into water, what I'll get there is NH3 plus the water, being a little better this time, but I'm forgetting the phases this time, bad. NH4 plus plus OH minus. So in my container will be NH3, NH4 plus, OH minus along with HCN, CN minus, and H3O plus. And if we notice, there's not one common ion there. So this is how we're going to go about deciding whether we've got something that's a buffer or just a plain old acid-base reaction. So let's talk about the outcome of these two things just a little bit um, after we try one more look through this group. And what I'd like you to do at this point is stop, stop the video and see if you can identify something that might be a buffer, a pair of acid and base that might be a buffer. Give it a try right now. Okay, so hopefully as you've looked over this myriad of possible players, you see that HClO2 and LiClO2 they have a common ion, don't they? So those could be buffers. Those two could be buffers right there. Similarly, NH4Cl and NH3, they share a common ion. I want to talk about that one because that one often eludes students as they look at this. So what would happen to the NH4Cl, it's a salt that's going to break apart into NH4 plus, plus Cl minus, but the NH3 will once again react with the water to form an equilibrium with NH4 plus, there's the common ion, and OH minus. So hopefully you can see that there is a common ion here between NH4Cl and NH3. That's the kind of thing you need to do to identify whether you're dealing with a buffer or not. So let's just summarize real quickly what we're going to be talking, what, what's going on here. If we have an acid and a base and they're unrelated, that is, they don't have a common ion, then it's just going to be a regular old acid-base reaction, and you're going to let it happen. For example, that first one was HCl. The first two acids and bases were HCl plus NaOH. And now we can treat this just like uh, Bronsted-Lowry. We know that this is the acid. We know that this is the base, so we know that the base is going to accept a base, base is going to accept a proton, and we're going to when we do that, we're going to create a water. So this proton right here, here's the the electrons there are going to be able to accept that proton, and we're going to get this uh, nice little NaCl and a water. Just a regular old acid-base reaction, but we can still think about it in terms of our old style of Bronsted-Lowry. However, if they mix and, they're, and they've got a related species, they've got this common ion, if they have that, then we're going to form a buffer. And that buffer is going to make a common equilibrium. So here's what you do. 
Whenever you do this, you're going to write the EQ, write the equilibrium for the acid or base, and let the salt dissociate. So there's one equilibrium and one dissociation. The salt dissociates, the regular acid or the regular base, whichever one you have, it will go into the equilibrium and you're gonna write that down. Those are the first steps of, of doing what's necessary to solve a buffer problem.